Elias or Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth a sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Will you stand for the glory of Patri? Thank you. You may be seated. What about healing? Old Testament healing, New Testament healing. Well, let's just not be here all day and say, what about New Testament healing? Is that all right? Shake it this way. Smile a little bit. New Testament healing. Well, we could spend a week on that if you listen to the TV or all the preachers that you hear on the radio because you'll hear all kinds of different things about healing. I hope you won't hear all different things about healing from the scripture today and from me today. I strive to be biblical. I think you know that. I hope you realize that. And I'm sure there, there are other scriptures about healing but this is what the lectionary calls for today, and so here's where we are. I'm going to back up one verse, uh, verse 12. You can look at it if you have your pew Bible there. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, your nay be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. My mother took that literally. I tell you, my mother took that literally. Even the word swear was a swear word in my house. I mean, she didn't want me swearing and she didn't want me giving an oath or anything. I mean, and you know, if you go and serve jury duty, now, I'm not going to ask you how many of you have because a lot of you have lied to get out of it. I didn't say that. But if you've done your responsibility, you've gone and you've at least sat in that room with a bunch of other people, whether they called you or not. But while you were waiting to see if you are going to be called, they had you to take an oath of a sort. And they said, now those of you who don't want to swear, you wait and we'll swear these in and then we'll let you others do what? Affirm. Affirm. Now, um, I was in a big room because I'm from Winston-Salem and we were in a big room and everyone in that room except two of us, they swore. A lot of swearing going on. And two of us and the other one was an independent Baptist. I knew his church, knew his pastor. The two of us affirmed. I felt better about that. Now, I don't know why the lectionary didn't include that verse in here today. Maybe they didn't want to cause that kind of controversy. But I wanted you to, hmm. So I charge you no extra for that. Uh, maybe you want to take that seriously. I don't know. Now, I know Abraham uh, had an oath. Right? That was between him and God. Now, you, you talk to God as directly as Abraham did. You, you can make an oath with God if God tells you. 
Is that fair? If you're talking directly with God and God says, let's make an oath, then, then that's fair. But between men, I'd, I'd just rather affirm it. Um, we're, we're just about past the days when a man's word is his bond, isn't, aren't we? Just can't trust people anymore. Well, I believe in the basic goodness of men. You're in for a sad, sad awakening. Man is basically evil. Now, you can say amen or owe me right there. You did a good job last week. I'm going to maybe not ask you to say amen so many times this week, but I will ask once in a while. You don't have to say anything right there. You don't have to agree or disagree. But man is basically evil. You say, Alan? You're jaded. No, I'm biblical. I'm biblical. Uh, David said in Psalm 51, In sin did my mother conceive me. He wasn't talking about his mother being a sinner, though she was. But he said, I was a sinner from conception. That's what he meant. I was a sinner before I was born. I was rebellious in the womb. And I may have said this to you last week. I'll say it again this week. If he was a rebellious sinner in the womb, he was a person in the womb. Say amen right there. You say he's not a person till he's born, not a person till his head comes out. So let's turn him around and let his feet come out first and then let's get something and suction his brain out before his head comes out. And he's not really a person. How ridiculous and how murderous has our society become. David said, I was a person from conception because I was a sinner from conception. Life begins in the womb. When that sperm fertilizes that egg, there is life. Say amen right and there I, I'll die on that mountain. There are not many things I'll die for, but that's one thing I'll die for. I'll die on that mountain. I'm not charging any extra for that either. But today we're talking about healing. That, that's a pretty big part of it, isn't it? Our nation needs healing from what I consider to be its second worst sin. You say, Alan, what's its worst sin? Don't you know what that is? unbelief unbelief because of our worst sin unbelief then we go and kill babies we do that because of what we are we're unbelieving sinners and so we think it's okay to kill babies father take us into this scripture that we're given today and may we honor the Lord Jesus Christ through it doesn't matter what I think or what I say, but it matters. It matters eternally what thou dost say. We're not just here to have a service because it's the Lord's day and it's 11 o'clock. We're here discussing eternal matters. We deal in eternalities. The world deals in temporalities. We deal in eternalities. As much as we appreciate the hospitals in this area, and we do, Lord, they deal ultimately in temporalities. We, the local church, the Bible-preaching church, deals in eternalities, and we must treat it as such, and we must revere it as such. So help us to handle thy truth carefully. We depend on thy Holy Spirit for that. Open our ears to hear from thee in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Afflicted. And then verse 14 says, Is any sick among you? Now, the verse 15, notice that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Now, there are three words there. 
afflicted, sick, and sick. And they are not necessarily the same. Is there uh, any among you afflicted? Do you know that that actually means, are there any among you who are just worn out from this world? Could be financial reversals. Could be the business has just worn you to a frazzle. Maybe your family has just fallen all apart. Boy, that's an affliction, isn't it? That can hurt worse than physical sickness. Is any among you afflicted? You name the affliction. What's come upon you that has simply sapped everything out of you and made you think you can't go on? Is any among you afflicted? It may be your fault and it may not be your fault. But whether it's your fault or not, it has affected you and you are afflicted. And as much as you are responsible, what are you to do about it? You're to pray. Now that seems weak as I say it. But it means you are to earnestly pray and keep on praying. Your business, if you're afflicted, is to earnestly pray. If you're afflicted, if your finances have fallen apart, if your family has fallen apart, if your nerves have fallen apart, your business is to pray and keep on praying and keep on praying. You say, Alan, that'll drive us nuts. No, you've gone nuts because you've not gone to Jesus. What are you saying? And you sing it because Grandma sang it and because it comes the Sunday to sing it. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins, all our sins and griefs to bear. And what does the song say? Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Is that just a song? Are those just words? You say, Alan, that's not scripture. It's not scripture, but it sure is scriptural. And it's scriptural right here. If anybody's afflicted, go and tell Jesus. Go and beg Jesus. Go and just bother Jesus about it. It's what he's there for. Bother him about it. Is anybody afflicted? among you. Let him pray and pray and pray and keep on praying because the one who can help you is the one who sits at the right hand of the throne of God. Is it in Mary? Perhaps you used to be afflicted and Christ delivered you from that. If you're Mary now, you ought to be saved. Say, I can't carry a tune worth anything. That doesn't matter. You know who's listening? The same God who listened to your prayer is now listening to your song. And if you're married now, it is a call to sing. You say, I'm not called to sing. If you're married, you're called to sing. Well, Alan... Some people are just married because they're too ignorant to know that they ought to be afflicted. That's all right. Leave them in their ignorance and let them sing away. God loves to hear us sing. Aren't you glad to know that the devil, though he is the prince of the power of the air, that God is not surprised at anything which happens? 
and that the devil is not going to go one centimeter further than God is going to allow him to go. And that God is not sitting on his throne. You can't see me back here or I'd sit down. He's not sitting on his throne, wringing his hands, saying, oh, oh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that something I've planned is not going to work out. That part of my program is not going to pan out. My God is not sitting on his throne worrying about that. Has it ever occurred to you that nothing ever occurred to God? Shall I say that again? Has it ever occurred to you that nothing ever occurred to God? He already knew it. And God is not bothered by whomever is in or out of the White House. Say amen right there. I may be bothered terribly. But God is not bothered one bit about who's in or who's out of the White House. That, that may be a hard one to swallow, but it's so. My God is still God. And I rest in him. And this book is still his word. And I rest in it. Well, I'll rush on. Verse 14. Is any sick? That word afflicted in 13 meant suffering ill from the outside world. In verse 14, this is more internal. Is any sick internally among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Now, I'm sure most of you have seen uh, these services where uh, they get ready to have the healing time. You've seen them on TV or you've been to them. And they say, all right, folks, any of you that want to be healed today or you want an anointing today, come on up to the front. Now, shake your head if you've ever seen anything like that. You know what I'm talking about. That is the elder calling for the sick, is it not? That's the elder calling for the sick. What does this say? Let the sick call for the elder. Say, oh, it doesn't matter who calls for whom. It must, because the Bible says, let the sick call for the elder. Don't let the elder call for the sick. Let the sick call for the elder. Seems like it might be presumptuous if the elder calls for the sick. Hmm. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. And here it comes, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, I've been anointed with oil. Probably most of you here have been anointed with oil for one purpose or another. I've been ordained a few times by this group or that group and Matter of fact, I'm partaking in an ordination today at 3 o'clock and uh, up in Surrey County. And uh, I don't know, I'm not in charge of it, but there might be some anointing that we do to that, uh, that dear pastor that we're ordaining. That will be fine. It, it is symbolic. David was anointed, remember, uh, symbolically saying that he was God's choice to be king of Israel. But this anointing for healing is completely different. Now, I have been even in Rowan County when I served here in Rowan County many years ago. I uh, was called by a sick person. And the elders, two or three of us, went over to the house. And we anointed that person with oil because that person asked us to and we did it and we prayed and do you know what was important there I'm going to get ahead of myself you know what was important there that we prayed not that we anointed with oil you say Alan why you're not going to like what this means this anointing here means to rub down 
it means to massage. Now, I've never been to an anointing service where they massage the sick person with oil. Have you? I have been there. Uh, that, that seems a little out of order, doesn't it? That's because the oil is not for the purpose of healing that it has any real spiritual power. In fact, one meaning of the anointing here is go and pray for him and then tell him to take his medicine. And if it makes him feel better, somebody go and give him a rub down with olive oil. That's literally what it means. Now, how many of you elders, and don't you dare raise your hand right now. This is a rhetorical question. How many of you elders are ready to go with me this afternoon over to some sick person's house and give him a rub down? Give them a massage. Now, I think probably the men ought to rub down the men and the women ought to rub down the women. Say amen right there. Let's not get ourselves in trouble. Do you know that's what it means? That's what this means. Uh, it was used another place. Jesus used this word that's used here for anointing. He used it when he said, when you fast, don't do it like the Pharisees to be seen. When you fast, dress up, shave. Put some stuff on your hair, make yourself look like you're not fasting. Don't put on a show, fix up as if you're not fasting. Anoint yourself as if you're not fasting. That's what it meant when Jesus used it. We're not talking about something mystical here. We're talking really about something medicinal here. Pray for him and tell him to take his medicine. And if a massage will help him, give him a massage. You didn't think that was in the Bible, did you? That's what this means right here. Give him a massage with olive oil in the name of the Lord. Say, I didn't think you could do that in the name of the Lord. Whatever you do, do it heartily. What's the rest of that verse? In the name of the Lord. Yeah, I can give a massage in the name of the Lord. If you can't, you ought not to do it. Now, I'm really not going to charge any extra for this, and I'm even going to turn sideways while I say it, and I'll look around so I'm not looking at anybody. If you husbands and wives ever give each other massages, and you ought to, don't say amen, but you ought to, then even when you're doing that, you ought to do that in the name of the Lord because it's proper, and it's right, and it's pure, and you ought to do that. If you're not doing it, you ought to get about doing it. Amen. I said amen. You didn't have to. Men, you can thank me later. And the prayer of faith. Oh, no. No, that's not what verse 15 says, is it? It's the anointing with oil shall save the sick. Is that what it says? What does it say in verse 15? The anointing with oil shall save the sick. Is that what it says? No, it says the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin. Not all sickness is because of sin. Now all sickness is because of sin originally. You understand. For there was not sickness until Adam and Eve fell in the garden of Eden. But not everyone who is sick is sick because they have sinned. That was even true in the day of Jesus. You remember the, the man born blind? And they said, why was this man born blind? Because some sin of his mother or some sin of his daddy. Jesus said, neither one. He was born blind 
because this day was going to come when he could be, bring glory to the Lord by being healed. Some sickness is to the glory of God. Oh, don't, don't tell the name it and claim it people I said that. Don't tell the blab it and grab it crowd I said that. Don't tell those who claim that all sickness is because of sin that I said that. They won't like me too well. Some sickness can be born to the glory of God. Some can be born to the glory of God. Now, I, my mother's been gone a long time, and I still don't know why she was so sick. Brain cancer, lung cancer, bone cancer. But I'll tell you, the day before she died, and for years, her, I don't know how long that cancer's been working on her, she didn't know either. But for years, though she was a powerful alto, for years before she died, she could barely get through a song without cracking up, without her voice just breaking. But the day before she died, and she was coming in and out of the coma, my first cousin and I were in her hospital room singing to her. And she had her hand taped around one of those little uh, Kleenex boxes because she had an IV in there and they didn't want to pull it at it. We were singing and my mother raised her hand and she added a third part to our duet in the most clear tone, most clear voice. We were singing a version of Psalm 23 and my mother, with the clearest voice, added that third part with us and raised her hand to heaven. Now, in her sickness, she was bringing glory to the Lord. Now, was her entire sickness to God's glory? I don't know, but she sure did die to the glory of God. I wouldn't take anything for that. I'm here to tell you, not everyone who's sick is sick because they have sinned. But if they have sinned, they shall be, those sins shall be forgiven him. I'd like to say more about that, but I won't. I haven't even looked at my clock. I better check my clock. Or I'll have to look at my calendar. One minute. Can't finish this in one minute. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. You, you want to see healing take place here in this congregation. I mean, there's all kind of sickness and affliction here. You could name it. Do you want to see it happen corporately? Look at verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. Now, that word fault can mean sin, but it is a later definition. You know, you look in a dictionary and you see this def definition one, definition two, definition three. Well, sin is a late definition of this word fault in the New Testament Greek. So it's not confessing sins. You say, Alan, why is that important? I'll tell you one reason why it's important. You better not be confessing sins to one another because the sheep will turn on you. They'll use it against you. I know you. You look pretty to me, but I'm not going to tell you my sins. I don't trust you enough to tell you my sins. You know who I trust enough to tell my sins? The Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's the only one can do good about them. Who can take them away. But I can confess my faults. My shortcomings. Things I might should have done this week for you and I didn't do them. Do you see the difference there? We should confess our faults one to another. We talked a little bit about that last week. If I know something 
that I should have done for you and I didn't, I should go to you and get it right. If I know that you should have done something for me, I know it, maybe you're not aware of it, I should go to you and get it right, that our prayers would not be hindered. See, all this fits together. And then when this is in effect, look at the last part of verse 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. Mm. What power, what power. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. He's just like we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Please don't try this out. Please don't see if you've got the faith of Elijah. Because I loved that rain this week. Did you? I loved it. I'd love to have it again this week, but they're saying we won't have it. Please don't pray that it won't rain for three and a half years. We don't need that. But it was a judgment on these people and they deserved it. Not that we don't deserve it. And he prayed again, verse 18, and the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save the soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Oh, we're talking about soul winning here. Well, I believe in soul winning, but that's not what this is talking about. Look at verse 19. What's the first word? I don't know what it is in your translation. In mine, it's brethren, and I suppose it's similar in yours. Brethren, if any of you, we're talking about Christian people here. James is writing to Christian people, not lost people. He's talking about Christian people here. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and it sure is easy and possible for Christians to stray from the truth. Shake your head this way. It is possible and easy for Christians who don't keep their noses in this book. You better keep your nose in this book. If you don't keep your nose in this book, you will err from the truth. You'll stray. If any of you, brethren, do err from the truth, and you've got somebody that cares enough about you to recognize that and to come to you and tell you your error and straighten you out, you better love somebody like that. Now, I don't think they're going to come to you and say, hey, you scallywag. Why are you going around doing this or teaching this? No, they're going to come to you in love. That's the way they ought to come to you. If any of you do err from the truth and you got somebody that cares enough about you to come to you and point it out to you and convert you, that's turn you around. Not get you saved all over again, but turn you around wherein you've erred. Let him know that he which converted the sinner, that one that cares enough about the erring brethren, the erring brother to point it out and lovingly straighten him out, who converted the sinner from the error of his way, shall save a soul from death. You say, what does that mean? It can mean a couple of things. What if I'm allowed to keep on teaching error and nobody straightens me out on it? I could lead some people so wrong that they would die and go to hell because I was teaching error and nobody straightened me out on it. But here's what it really means, the primary meaning of this. Suppose I'm teaching error, and I keep teaching error, and I keep teaching error, and I keep teaching error, and it's pointed out to me, and I say, nope, I'm going to keep teaching what I'm teaching. And it's pointed out to me, oh, nope, I'm going to keep teaching what I'm teaching. And I persist 
in doing and teaching what is wrong, then there is that which is called the sin unto death. Only a believer can commit the sin to death. I was uh, on the staff of a church in Salisbury several years ago, and I was teaching a class on a Sunday afternoon. It was actually on evangelism, but somehow the sin unto death came up. And there were some seasoned believers in there, and they looked at me like a calf at a new gate. They didn't know a bit more about the sin to death. They, they'd never heard of the sin unto death. And it, it buffaloed me because I, I thought these people surely knew about the sin unto death. Say, Alan, if you don't shut up, you're going to find out about the sin unto death. I wish I could swear. The sin unto death is only for a believer if he sins and it's pointed out that he's in error, and yet he persists, and he persists, and he persists. God says, and this is just a very abbreviation, old boy, old girl, if you won't live right down here, I'll take you somewhere you, where you will live right, because you are my responsibility, you are wearing my name, and it is my responsibility not to let you continue in your error. Now, I've seen that. I have seen it happen. I've seen it happen, and it will happen. I won't take time to give you an illustration of it, but I have seen it happen, and it is so. But let that fellow know that he which saw that fellow in error and converted him from the error of his way, he saved that soul from the sin and the death. If he had persisted, God would have had no choice but to take him home early and shall hide a multitude of sins. No telling who he would have taught wrong and led the wrong way. Now, you say, Alan, healing? This is healing? Yeah, healing. There's some hurting people here today. I have some friends here today, and I'm, I'm glad to see them. I really am. I have one friend here today who lost her brother just a matter of a couple of months ago. She's hurting. She's afflicted. I have another friend I've known for many, many years, and she lost her husband to COVID not many months ago. She's afflicted. I have another friend who even more recently lost her sister. She's afflicted. She's afflicted. And you could call some people that you know, and maybe you're afflicted. Maybe you're sick. This message has been for you. There's healing. If you're God's child, there is healing. If you're not God's child, there's no healing. You say, Alan, why would you say that? Because it's so. Those who are outside of Christ have no hope. They are practical atheists. They're without God in this world. But if you're in Christ, this message is for you. And I'll tell you today, if you're outside of Christ, it's time to get in Christ. Can you not see the benefit? Can you not see the benefit? Father, take this word, thy word, not my word. Somehow I feel I've not got the point across, but thy Holy Spirit can get that point across today. Comfort hearts which need to be comforted. Heal sick people which need to be healed today. And Father, do it in a way where thou dost get all the glory and not some shyster who thinks he by the laying on of his hands is going to make something happen. Father, we thank thee for those in the church whom thou dost gift with the gifts of healings, those who seem to have a way with prayer that if I get sick, I want them praying for me because it seems that in that matter, they seem to be able to rattle the throne of God 
for him. And I thank thee for that gift and for those who are gifted with that gift. So, Father, we thank thee for this word. Gift or no gift, we thank thee for this word. Whereby we can get what we need when we need it. Help us, Father, though, to submit. There's a lot of submission here in these verses. To submit to thy Holy Spirit. Help us today and this week to ponder this word. In the name of Jesus. Our song, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord, page 329. 329, will you stand? Good morning. Glad to see you guys here today. Um, have a few announcements. Again, bizarre things. 
So uh, Cindy has tickets if anybody needs tickets for the bazaar to sell. We also have um, basket ideas listed. And if you have any items that might go in these baskets, um, please bring them to the church so we can organize them and get them into baskets for the bazaar. There's a list of basket ideas um, on the front pew. If any of you want to do the whole basket, that's wonderful. But if you just have new items sitting at home, things that you think would look good in a basket, um, please, by all means, bring them in and we'll try to organize them and put them in a basket for you. Um, I also have letters of request for gift cards or discounts if anybody is interested in that if you can go to one of your vendors your stores um, food lion walmart walmart takes a little longer but food lion usually in the locals will do 25 dollars gift certificates you can use them to buy things for the baskets or you can put the gift card in a basket um, i have some of those as well um, we let's see is there anything else don't forget cakes, pies, and sweet shop that's coming up so for the bazaar. So think about what you can donate for those things. Um, then there is a pastoral search committee meeting on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Excuse me, if you're on the pastoral search committee, please be here. Um, is there anything else I'm supposed to announce today? Noodle making. Thank you. I knew there was something else that wasn't on the list. So we didn't get a lot of noodles made this last week. Um, so we have decided to do uh, a couple more days. We did a little bit yesterday. Um, and we are gonna do again at three o'clock today. And then tomorrow from, 12, from eight to 12, excuse me. So if anyone is interested in coming out and helping making the noodles, we are doing another couple of days of that. And um, I believe that's everything. One more, okay, thank you. Does anybody else have any? If any of you are in Rockwell and you become concerned like I did this past week, our state historical sign marker is not where it was, it's gone. And uh, I called the uh, Department of Transportation. Someone accidentally hit it and tore the post up, but the sign is fine and has been stored. As soon as they can get a new post, they're gonna put it back up. So I wanted to let you guys know somebody hasn't you know taken it. It will be back, it just got hit. Are there any other announcements? Liz, are we gonna meet in the blue room today? Um, yes, consistory will meet in the blue room because there are noodles on the tables downstairs. So consistory right after service. I wanted to welcome, since I missed this last time, I wanna welcome Pastor Hutchins again. Um, he is here um, filling in for us right now and um, we welcome you and, and thank you for, you for helping us out this week. Um, all my papers so welcome in the name of the Lord open your hearts today to hear God's word and your spirits to receive God's healing love come let us worship and celebrate his good news for us as we bring our hopes and prayers to God during the uh, during this hour of worship um, Please join us, stand and join for the hymn, opening hymn, Rise Up, O Men of God, page 389 in the red hymnal. <laughs>
Will you join with me in the call to worship? If it had not been God who was on our side, the troubles of our world would have swallowed us all. If it had not been God who was on our side, the sorrows of our times would have swept us away. Are any among us suffering? Come and pray. Are any among us cheerful? Come and sing songs of praise. Are any among us sick? Come and ask for healing. Our help is in our God. The one who made heaven and earth. Call upon God, creator and rescuer. God is on our side. Will you pray with sincerity the prayer of confession in unison with me? Lord of joy and mercy, be with us this day as we seek your voice and your guidance. We know that you call us to service, but we often feel inadequate. We love to make excuses for not doing something or for doing something only half-heartedly. Remind us again of your loving and guiding presence. Forgive us when we stumble or falter. Turn us again to you serving joyfully and confidently. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now I ask you, brothers and sisters of Grace, Lower Stone Church, what do you believe? I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Now we'll hear the choir sing. <coughs> have a children's message today? Okay. 
So what I want to talk to you about today is sometimes God loses something too. You know what God loses? It's not his temper. That's not it. <laughs> God loses people sometimes because they turn away from God and God gave us a free will to choose whether we're going to go with him or go the other direction. Sometimes he loses us. But, but God is very, very, very much so loving. Loves us more than anything else. And when he does lose us, he goes and tries to find us. Well, he knows where we're already at, but he tries to bring us back. So now, when you lost those um, nuts that you gathered up yesterday, did you go looking for them to yeah. start with the first time? Yeah, they looked around the second time, and then they were there, but they weren't there. That's right. If they were there, but then they were gone. Well, that's the way it is with us and God. We're there with him, and then suddenly we're gone the other direction. But he always comes back. go the other direction. He always goes and looks for us to bring us back. And sometimes God will use other people who are still with him to help him to go and find the other people. So in the same way that you two helped each other when you were looking for the nuts yesterday, God will ask us to help him to go and find the people that he's lost and find the people. So always bear that in mind that sometimes God may be nudging you along to go and look for someone who has gone the other direction and has left God behind. Be ready to answer that call if he asks you to do it, okay? All right, let's have a brief prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these young people and for all the young people in the world. We ask that you would be with each of them and with us as well through this next week. We pray these things in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, I do have you some candy, but I'm going to give this to Judy because she's going to do children's church. And she'll give you the candy at the right time in the church, okay? okay. Have yourself a good day. You can give them a couple. <laughs> now I didn't lose anything, but I left something. And I was gonna put our acolyte on the spot, but he's gone. So I'll put you on the spot and you know what I left. And I, I'm a bottle baby I cannot do without. Thank you. Thank you for looking out for me. I appreciate that. And if I forget it there, one of the choir members will have to toss it up to me. It's prayer time. It's a serious time. And it's a time, as I said last week, that I know very little about. I ought to know more about it. I ought to be more experienced with it. The writer of Hebrews said, Our forerunner has entered in and has left the way open behind the veil for us to go in and get whatever we need at times of need. And we ought to keep the way busy. We ought to keep that place going. And we ought to not let him rest. Does God need rest? No. He doesn't need rest. And the scripture says that Jesus even ever lives at the right hand of the throne of God to make intercession for us. That means we must do a lot of sinning, and we do. But whatever the needs are today, whether for Lost people, do we pray enough for the lost? For sick people, seems like that's all we ever pray for. For missionaries, yeah, sometimes. But for those who are simply weak and burned out, we need to pray for those too. When's the last time we prayed in earnest for our local church. Now I prefaced all that, maybe I shouldn't have, but I ask you today, you look on the back of your bulletin and you see your prayer list, you may want to update some details about those, but what are your requests today? Any outspoken requests or updates today?
others. Jason Chu. I asked this last week, are there those that you don't care to mention out loud, but you'd like for us to pray concerning unspoken requests? You'll lift a hand and say, pray for this request. I won't mention it out loud. There's one. There are others. I have those myself. Let's pray. Father, it continually blows my mind, and it enlivens my spirit to know that thou art a God who knows intimately and infinitely about all of our needs and our wants and our concerns and that thou dost know exactly how to answer these petitions. We pray, Father, and as we preached last week, we pray and we even think about it. And still we pray amiss. We ask selfishly. Or we ask so that we might have what we ask for to fulfill an, an inordinate desire. How dare us. Teach us to pray properly, Lord. And be patient with us. For we are finite. And we learn that more and more how finite we really are. How ignorant we really are. And we thank thee so much for Romans chapter 8 that lets us know that there are two that are bearing our request to thee. Both thy son at thy right hand and the, the adorable Holy Ghost who takes these stumbling words into the throne room for us. So Father, instead of it being a chore, it ought to be a blessed privilege. We pray today for Grace Lower Stone Church. We pray for a great move of God here, not for anyone's glory but thine, not to lift up anyone but thy son, and not to exalt anything but thy word. Father, Help us each individually to yield to thy Holy Spirit for it. And Father, that will please thee. We cannot please thee without faith, and we cannot please thee without hearing the word, because we cannot have faith apart from the hearing of the word. Father, open our ears to hear. And Father, Open our hearts, break them even, that we be burdened with these requests that we've made known and those unspoken requests and these written on the back of the bulletin. Father, may through this week we be led of the Holy Spirit to bring these petitions before Thee. And then, Father, if it helps us, May we lean then back on the pattern, the model that thy son taught us to pray, our Father, who art. Now will you look in your pew Bible or your personal Bible 
as we read Psalm 124. I'll be reading from the King James. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our song is a militant song and a good song. Page 292, will you stand? Onward, Christian soldiers. <laughs>
may be seated if you wish. The reading, the New Testament reading from James 5, and I especially want you to turn there, have that in front of you and keep it in front of you, is brief and so we'll read it and then read it again. Today, James 5, 13 through 20, and I am reading again from the King James. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much.
Good morning. Glad to see you guys here today. Um, have a few announcements. Again, bizarre things. So uh, Cindy has tickets if anybody needs tickets for the bazaar to sell. We also have um, basket ideas listed. And if you have any items that might go in these baskets, um, please bring them to the church so we can organize them and get them into baskets for the bazaar. There's a list of basket ideas um, on the front pew. If any of you want to do the whole basket, that's wonderful. But if you just have new items sitting at home, things that you think would look good in a basket, um, please, by all means, bring them in and we'll try to organize them and put them in a basket for you. Um, I also have letters of request for gift cards or discounts if anybody is interested in that if you can go to one of your vendors your stores um, food lion walmart walmart takes a little longer but food lion usually in the locals will do 25 dollars gift certificates you can use them to buy things for the baskets or you can put the gift card in a basket um, i have some of those as well um, we let's see is there anything else don't forget cakes, pies, and sweet shop that's coming up so for the bazaar. So think about what you can donate for those things. Um, then there is a pastoral search committee meeting on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Excuse me, if you're on the pastoral search committee, please be here. Um, is there anything else I'm supposed to announce today? Noodle making. Thank you. I knew there was something else that wasn't on the list. So we didn't get a lot of noodles made this last week. Um, so we have decided to do uh, a couple more days. We did a little bit yesterday. Um, and we are gonna do again at three o'clock today. And then tomorrow from, 12, from eight to 12, excuse me. So if anyone is interested in coming out and helping making the noodles, we are doing another couple of days of that. And um, I believe that's everything. One more, okay, thank you. Does anybody else have any? If any of you are in Rockwell and you become concerned like I did this past week, our state historical sign marker is not where it was, it's gone. And uh, I called the uh, Department of Transportation. Someone accidentally hit it and tore the post up, but the sign is fine and has been stored. As soon as they can get a new post, they're gonna put it back up. So I wanted to let you guys know somebody hasn't you know taken it. It will be back, it just got hit. Are there any other announcements? Consistory, we're going to meet in the blue room today. Um, yes, consistory will meet in the blue room because there are noodles on the tables downstairs. So consistory right after service. I wanted to welcome, since I missed this last time, I want to welcome Pastor Hutchins again. Um, he is here um, filling in for us right now, and um, we welcome you and, and thank you for you for helping us out this week. Um, all my papers so welcome in the name of the Lord open your hearts today to hear God's word and your spirits to receive God's healing love come let us worship and celebrate his good news for us as we bring our hopes and prayers to God during the uh, during this hour of worship um, Please join us, stand and join for the hymn, opening hymn, Rise Up, O Men of God, page 389 in the red hymnal. <laughs>
Will you join with me in the call to worship? If it had not been God who was on our side, the troubles of our world would have swallowed us all. If it had not been God who was on our side, the sorrows of our town would have swept us away. Are any among us suffering? Come and pray. Are any among us cheerful? Come and sing songs of praise. Are any among us sick? Come and ask for healing. Our help is in our God. The one who made heaven and earth. Call upon God, creator and rescuer. God is on our side. Will you pray with sincerity the prayer of confession in unison with me? Lord of joy and mercy, be with us this day as we seek your voice and your guidance. We know that you call us to service, but we often feel inadequate. We love to make excuses for not doing something or for doing something only half-heartedly. Remind us again of your loving and guiding presence. Forgive us when we stumble or falter. Turn us again to you serving joyfully and confidently. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I ask you, brothers and sisters of Grace, Lower Stone Church, what do you believe? I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Now we'll hear the choir sing. <coughs> have a children's message today? Okay. 
So what I want to talk to you about today is sometimes God loses something too. You know what God loses? It's not his temper. That's not it. <laughs> God loses people sometimes because they turn away from God and God gave us a free will to choose whether we're going to go with him or go the other direction. Sometimes he loses <laughs> us. But, but God is very, very, very much so loving. Loves us more than anything else. And when he does lose us, he goes and tries to find us. Well, he knows where we're already at, but he tries to bring us back. So now, when you lost those um, nuts that you gathered up yesterday, did you go looking for them to yeah. start with the first time? Yeah, they looked around the second time, and then they were there, but they weren't there. That's right. If they were there, but then they were gone. Well, that's the way it is with us and God. We're there with him, and then suddenly we're gone the other direction. But he always comes back. go the other direction. He always goes and looks for us to bring us back. And sometimes God will use other people who are still with him to help him to go and find the other people. So in the same way that you two helped each other when you were looking for the nuts yesterday, God will ask us to help him to go and find the people that he's lost and find the people. So always bear that in mind that sometimes God may be nudging you along to go and look for someone who has gone the other direction and left God behind. Be ready to answer that call if he asks you to do it, okay? All right, let's have a brief prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these young people and for all the young people in the world. We ask that you would be with each of them and with us as well through this next week. We pray these things in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have you some candy, but I'm going to give this to Judy because she's going to do children's church. And she'll give you the candy at the right time in church, okay? okay. Have yourself a good day. You can give them a couple. <laughs> now I didn't lose anything, but I left something. And I was gonna put our acolyte on the spot, but he's gone. So I'll put you on the spot and you know what I left. And I, I'm a bottle baby I cannot do without. Thank you. Thank you for looking out for me. I appreciate that. And if I forget it there, one of the choir members will have to toss it up to me. It's prayer time. It's a serious time. And it's a time, as I said last week, that I know very little about. I ought to know more about it. I ought to be more experienced with it. The writer of Hebrews said, Our forerunner has entered in and has left the way open behind the veil for us to go in and get whatever we need at times of need. And we ought to keep the way busy. We ought to keep that place going. And we ought to not let him rest. Does God need rest? No. He doesn't need rest. And the scripture says that Jesus even ever lives at the right hand of the throne of God to make intercession for us. That means we must do a lot of sinning, and we do. But whatever the needs are today, whether for Lost people, do we pray enough for the lost? For sick people, seems like that's all we ever pray for. For missionaries, yeah, sometimes. But for those who are simply weak and burned out, we need to pray for those too. When's the last time we prayed in earnest for our local church. Now I prefaced all that. Maybe I shouldn't have. But I ask you today. You look on the back of your bulletin. And you see your prayer list. You may want to update some details about those. But what are your requests today? Any outspoken requests or updates today?
others. Jason Chu. I asked this last week, are there those that you don't care to mention out loud, but you'd like for us to pray concerning unspoken requests? You'll lift a hand and say, pray for this request. I won't mention it out loud. There's one. There are others. I have those myself. Let's pray. Father, it continually blows my mind, and it enlivens my spirit to know that thou art a God who knows intimately and infinitely about all of our needs and our wants and our concerns and that thou dost know exactly how to answer these petitions. We pray, Father, and as we preached last week, we pray and we even think about it. And still we pray amiss. We ask selfishly. Or we ask so that we might have what we ask for to fulfill an, an inordinate desire. How dare us. Teach us to pray properly, Lord. And be patient with us. For we are finite. And we learn that more and more how finite we really are. How ignorant we really are. And we thank thee so much for Romans chapter 8 that lets us know that there are two that are bearing our request to thee. Both thy son at thy right hand and the, the adorable Holy Ghost who takes these stumbling words into the throne room for us. So Father, instead of it being a chore, it ought to be a blessed privilege. We pray today for Grace Lower Stone Church. We pray for a great move of God here, not for anyone's glory but thine, not to lift up anyone but thy son, and not to exalt anything but thy word. Father, Help us each individually to yield to thy Holy Spirit for it. And Father, that will please thee. We cannot please thee without faith, and we cannot please thee without hearing the word, because we cannot have faith apart from the hearing of the word. Father, open our ears to hear. And Father, Open our hearts, break them even, that we be burdened with these requests that we've made known and those unspoken requests and these written on the back of the bulletin. Father, may through this week we be led of the Holy Spirit to bring these petitions before thee. And then, Father, if it helps us, May we lean then back on the pattern, the model that thy son taught us to pray, our Father, who art. Now will you look in your pew Bible or your personal Bible 
as we read Psalm 124. I'll be reading from the King James. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our song is a militant song and a good song. Page 292, will you stand? Onward, Christian soldiers. <laughs>
may be seated if you wish. The reading, the New Testament reading from James 5, and I especially want you to turn there, have that in front of you and keep it in front of you, is brief and so we'll read it and then read it again. Today, James 5, 13 through 20, and I am reading again from the King James. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 